Hello everyone! Today we're going to go over the Pythagorean Theorem which falls under the Common Court State's Math Standards of 8th graders. We will be explaining the proof of the Pythagorean Theorem and its converse. Okay, so starting off with the proof. I broke it down into different steps for you guys. The first step would be we need four identical right triangles, okay? And for the purpose of this video, I'm going to label each side of them so that we know exactly what we're dealing with. So, these are the colors that I chose. I'm going to label one of the sides B, and they're all going to be yellow. And the other side, the other short side, is going to be A, and they're all going to be blue. And the hypotenuse right over here, that's going to be C, and they're going to be purple. Okay? So, we have four identical right triangles all labeled in. Alright, so... Now what we're going to do is find the area of all of these triangles together. So we know that the area of one triangle is half base times height. Okay, but we have four of them, so we're actually going to multiply this whole thing by four. So the total area of these triangles is 2AB. Great. So let's keep this in mind, okay, and move on to step three. So, for step three, again, we have four identical right triangles. And what we're going to do here, actually, is we're going to make a square. And the C, the purple, it's going to be the outside perimeter of the square. Let me show you. So, let's turn this one, bring this one down, this one up, and this one to the side. There we go. So, from the four triangles that we've had, we made them into a square with the C as the perimeter on the outside. Okay, and again, what we're trying to show is a different way to find the total area of the triangles. And how would we do that here? Well, if we take the area of the big square following the purple and subtract that by the area of this little square inside, we will be able to find the total area of the triangles. So, let me say that one more time. The area of the big square minus the area of the little square it's actually going to equal the total area of the triangles. So, the area of the big square, if we follow here, C times C, that's going to be C squared, minus the total area of the little square, okay? So, how do we find that? Well, one of the sides, we know that it's going to be, right here, this side, it's going to be B minus A. So, B minus A, and again, it's length times width, so it's going to have to be B minus A squared. So the area of the big square minus the area of the little square equals the total area of the triangles. So if we take what we found in step 2 and in step 4 and make them equal to each other, we should be able to find the proof of the Pythagorean theorem. So this is what we found in step 2. This is what we found in step 4. All right, so now let's just solve it, okay? On the left-hand side, 2AB. On the right-hand side, remember to distribute the exponent properly and also distribute the negative sign. And this is what we get. Let's subtract 2AB from both sides. On the left-hand side, we get 0. On the right-hand side, because these two cancel out, we get C squared minus B squared equals A squared. Great. So now, let's move over the A squared and let's move over the B squared because the purpose here is to leave C squared by itself. Okay, and on the left hand side we have a squared plus b squared equals, because these two cancel out, c squared. And boom, ladies and gentlemen, we have proven the Pythagorean theorem. Yay! Okay, so now what we have is the Pythagorean theorem's converse. Oh, mm, sorry, not those type of converse. It's converse. So what do we do? First, for the converse, we start off with a triangle. You don't know anything about this triangle except the sides. You know that one side is A, the other side is B, and the other side is C. We plug it into our famous equation, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And if A squared plus B squared does in fact equal C squared, then you can safely assume that the triangle that you are working with is a right triangle. Okay, so the converse here works a little different. You start off with a triangle first, and you check if it is a right triangle. Here, let me give you an example. You have a triangle over here with sides 1, 2, and 3. You don't know what type of triangle it is. Let's plug it into our equation. 1 squared plus 2 squared equals 3 squared. We can already see something's going wrong because we know that 5 does not equal 9. 
so we can safely assume that the triangle we're working with is not a right triangle. Okay, so another example, we have a triangle with sides 3, 4, and 5. We plug it into our equation and we see that 25 does equal 25, so you can safely assume that the triangle you're dealing with is in fact a right triangle. And that is it. So here is your summary really quickly of the Pythagorean theorem. Path Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. The theorem only works for right triangles and it says that the square of both sides is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. And it's converse. It checks to see if the triangle you are dealing with is in fact a right triangle. And if the sides that you have for your triangle A, B, and C, if in fact A squared plus B squared equals C squared, then the triangle that you are working with is a right triangle. And that is all, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching. That has been the Pythagorean Theorem.